Good day to all of you. Today we shall discuss on thread issues. Processes consist of threads. Threads make our computation efficient. So programs under execution are processes. In a process one or many threads may be there. That is units of execution. As many threads so many different executions at the same time they will be done. Hence they can make the computation efficient. Whenever we use threads, there are certain issues. They are related with first one, the fork system call and EXEC system call. Then second one, signal handling. Third one, thread cancellation. Fourth one, thread local storage. Fifth one, scheduler activations. So next we shall see the first one, fork system call and EXEC system call related. Fork system call is used to duplicate a process. It creates a child process from parent process with the different process ID. So whenever in a process when fork system call is called then another process of the same type is created. It will have different process ID. The process which created this by calling fork system call is called as parent process and the newly created process with new process ID similar to the parent process that is called as child process. EXEC system call is used for replacing the content of a process with another process but it retains the same process ID. Okay. Here whenever in a process ESEC system call is used or called in the same process its content is replaced with the contents of another process. And it retains the same process ID. But how these system calls behave is changed in a multi-threaded program. If one thread in a multi-threaded program calls fork system call, then what new process is created? Will it duplicate all the threads? Or in the new process only one thread that is calling fork system call, will it be there? A process may have multiple threads. Any one thread may be calling fork system call. Then a new process is created but in that new process will it duplicate all the threads or only that thread which is calling the fork system call that is the issue there. Some unique systems have two versions of fork system call. One duplicates all the threads and another duplicates only that thread which invoked the fork system call. But which version of fork system call must be used and when? These are to be determined. Okay. In case of EXEC system call, it will replace the entire process including all the threads. This is when a process has multiple threads and one thread invokes EXEC system call and in that another process is passed as a parameter to the EXEC system call. Means when in a process EXEC system call when used, another process is passed as a parameter to this. Then a new process is created with the content of that process which is passed here. Okay. This system call will replace all the content of the process with another process which is passed as a parameter to that EXEC system call. Hence, in this case, entire process will be replaced including all the threads. There is no other option. So, after knowing about fork system call and EXEC system call in case of multi-threaded programs, next we shall see what to determine about two versions of fork system call, which one to use. In Unix systems, where two versions of fork system call are available which one to use if exec call is used immediately after forking that case we'll have to consider fork system call is called then exec system call is also called immediately after that then what all issues are to be faced that is first case when we call fork system call the process is going to be duplicated if immediately after this EXEC system call is used or called, then that system call will replace all the contents of process by another process that is passed as a parameter to this EXEC system call. 
in this suppose fork system call version which duplicates process with all the threads and immediately if exec system call is called anyway it will replace all the threads hence it is better not to duplicate all the threads but to duplicate only that thread which invoke the fork system call that is better in this case duplicating only calling thread is appropriate that version of fork system call must be used if immediately after that exec system call is called what is the calling thread here the thread that calls fork system call if one of the thread invokes fork system call but it is not followed by exec system call and also if we want duplication of all the threads then it is better to use the second version of fork system call that duplicates all the threads so this is the second case what were the two cases in first case first calling fork system call immediately after that uh, exec system call so fork system call will duplicate the process exec system call will replace that process and all the threads hence uh, it is better to use that fork system call which will not duplicate all the threads only that thread which invokes the fork system call that is better in anyway because exec system call is going to replace whole process in second case only fork system call is called immediately after that exec system call is not called then it is better to go for second version of fork system call which duplicates all the threads okay so that is regarding the first issue and its solution that is related to fork system call and exec system call in that two cases okay so next we shall see second case second case is signal handling signal is the notification that is sent to a process whenever a particular event occurs signal may be received by process either synchronously or asynchronously depending on the source and the reason for event a signal whether it is synchronous or asynchronous signal is generated delivered and after that it must be handled there are two possible signal handlers a default signal handler and a user defined signal handler every signal has a default signal handler that is kernel user defined signal handlers are also called to handle a particular signal signals are handled in different ways some signals can be simply ignored because example when changing the size of a window occurs that event occurs it can be ignored even if ignored it will not cause any problem some signals such as illegal memory access signals are handled by terminating the program signals in single threaded and multi threaded programs in single threaded program handling signals is straight forward signals are delivered to a process because only one process to that the signals will be delivered but in multi threaded program so there the signals to be delivered to which thread deliver the signal to the thread to which the signal applies means to that pros to that thread only for which the signal is meant for that it is delivered deliver the signal to every thread in the process means for all thread in the process deliver the signal to certain threads in the process means only for some specific threads in the process assign a specific thread to receive all signals for the process assign a specific thread to receive all signals for the process so these are the issues in signal handling okay in case of first single threaded program and then in case of multi threaded program okay that is signal is a notification sent to a process when particular event occurs right that signal may be received by process synchronously or asynchronously whatever be the situation signal must be generated delivered and then it must be handled there are two types of handlers one is default signal handler that is kernel another handler can be defined by the user okay every signal has default signal handler that is handled by kernel so 
for a particular signal handling user defined signal handlers are called some signals can be ignored their impact will not be too much some signals such as illegal memory access in their case programs are terminated then we saw the issues in signals in single threaded and multi threaded programs okay so that is all about signal handling so next we shall see the issues in thread cancellation okay the issues or problems that we face in thread cancellation so the difficulty lies in situation so what is thread cancellation thread cancellation means terminating a thread before its completion of whole execution so what are the issues in this the difficulty lies in thread cancellations in following situations resources have been allocated to a cancelled thread the thread is cancelled in the middle of updating the data that it is sharing with other threads because other threads then may read incomplete data because of thread being cancelled which was sharing or updating the data so if the thread is having resources that is the first situation in second situation if it is updating the data okay before updating the data only if it is terminated then with other threads it may be sharing the data so they will be getting unupdated data that is what happens because of thread cancellation so a thread is under execution holding some resources then suddenly without any notice that is what is the meaning of asynchronously if that thread is cancelled then before its completion of execution it is terminated hence that target thread means the thread which is going to be cancelled that is called as target thread hence that target thread will not have freed all the resources allocated to it so those resources will not be available in some cases os cannot reclaim all resources then this problem occurs hence asynchronous cancellation is not a very good technique the other technique which is preferred that is called as deferred cancellation okay so in cancellation there are two types asynchronous cancellation and deferred cancellation in asynchronous cancellation without giving notification to the target thread it is cancelled because of which whatever resources it is holding they cannot be reclaimed okay hence those resources will not be available to other executions so that is what is with asynchronous cancellation which is not a good technique so the second technique is deferred cancellation deferred cancellation it is much safer way of cancelling a target thread in this target thread is not cancelled immediately without any notice as in asynchronous cancellation in deferred cancellation the thread which is going to cancel the thread the target thread it indicates to the target thread that it is to be cancelled the cancellation will not occur immediately the cancellation will occur only after the target thread has checked a flag that flag it will check to determine whether it is to be cancelled or no if target thread is holding some resources or it is in some critical situation where it is not safe to be cancelled then it will not be cancelled the target thread has the power to defer the cancellation it will be cancelled only at a point when it can be cancelled safely okay in the second cancellation that is deferred cancellation the target thread has the power to choose whether it should be cancelled yes or no it will be repeatedly checking that flag and it will decide whether it is safe to be cancelled yes or no it depends all on the critical situation in which it is executing so first the thread which is going to cancel this will have notified this then this target thread will check the flag and then decide and only if it is safe then it will be cancelled okay thus at the permission of target thread it will be cancelled hence cancellation will be safer 
because that target trade by checking the flag it will have checked whether it is safe to be cancelled yes or no right so that is all about what is threat cancellation what are the two situations that pose problems regarding threat cancellation and the two techniques of threat cancellation okay next thread local storage so this figure shows process block process had code data and file sections so in this we can see three threads belonging to the single process there those threads will have their own registers and stack these two for this thread similarly these two for the second one these two for third one each thread will have their own register and stack okay so here the figure shows a process block which has three threads all the three threads belong to one process and share code data and file section of that process that is the advantage of multi threaded programming but in some application say for example in transaction processing system may service each transaction in a separate thread each transaction may be assigned a unique identifier then to associate each thread with its unique identifier we use thread local storage that is a thread's own copy of certain data not shared data section of the process so here threads are sharing the code data and file section of the process okay in case of transaction processing thread is required to have its own copy of data not this shared data that is what the meaning so that uh, threads own copy of certain data not shared data section of the process so that is very important the thread maintaining its own copy of certain data which is very much uh, required in transaction processing not the shared section of data of the process to which it belongs that shows significance of thread local storage okay so the next issue is scheduler activations this is concerned with multi threaded programs in that with communication between kernel and the thread library kernel threads must dynamically adjusted through user threads to ensure the best performance in many to many so many user threads associated with many kernel threads that is many to many model or two level model then what is two level model here many to many model is there and here one more is given one to one model so one user thread associated with one kernel thread combination of both is called as two level model okay so in many to many or two level model an intermediate data structure is placed between the user and kernel threads the data structure is called as lightweight process or lwp so that is this user thread and kernel thread between the two one data structure lwp that is placed its name is it is lightweight process using user thread library an application can schedule a user thread to run on virtual processor that is lwp lightweight process each lwp is attached to a kernel thread and it is kernel threads run on physical processor if a kernel thread blocks while waiting for an io operation to complete the lwp blocks as well in the hierarchy or up the chain the user level thread attached to the lwp also blocks that is in this case this user thread will run on this virtual processor that is lightweight process or lwp which is the data structure that is created between user thread and kernel thread okay if kernel thread blocks up the chain the lwp also gets blocked hence execution of this thread also gets terminated okay so that is all about scheduler activations with this we come to the end of the issues with threads so they are discussed under five 
subheadings. The issues related to fork and EX EC system call, second one signal handling, third one thread cancellation, fourth one thread local storage, fifth one scheduler activations. That completes the discussion. I hope you understood. Thank you.